A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's learn about Scientology. All the words and strange definitions to make normal terms seem far more malicious. Harbert laid a clever trap, but in the end it's a whole bunch of crap. Hello there darlings, my name is Samuel, aka the SP Chef. I'm an ex-Scientologist, I grew up within Scientology as a child, and when I was 13 years old I joined the elite group within Scientology called the Sea Organization in East Grinstead in England. I then worked for Scientology for seven years, I left when I was 20, came back to Switzerland, which is where I'm originally from, and then I left Scientology quietly with 25. But it was only with 31 that I for the very first time, talked about my own experience within Scientology publicly. And ever since then, I have been publishing I different interviews. I've been doing videos talking about my experience in Scientology on my channel. So do check that out if you're interested in that. But here on this series, the ABCs of Scientologies, I will break down the different Scientology words and terms that Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, invented, made up to explain Scientology. Now that can get quite difficult, which is why I thought I'll do a series where I will take each letter of the alphabet and then take some words for each of these letters that are commonly heard around within Scientology and maybe even people who have never been in Scientology may have even heard some of these terms. So I will show you exactly what he has written about it because there are two Scientology dictionaries that he, Hubbard, wrote to explain these Scientology words. And I will read out loud to you exactly what he wrote. And then if I need to explain, I will explain a little bit further what that means exactly. And I will give examples where I would have used that word or that term. So without any further ado, this week the letter will be... So without any plot twist, we are actually going to start with the letter A. So I've picked out four words. We're going to start with aberration, acknowledgement, ARC and ARC break. So let's start off with aberration. This is what Hubbard has written in his dictionary. By definition, a crooked line. It is from the Latin aberratio, a wandering from and from the Latin errare, to wander or to err. A sane person thinks, looks and sees in straight lines. Black is black, white is white. The aberrated person looks towards black and wanders off in his gaze to something else and makes the error of saying it is grey. You can consider aberration in a passive way, supinely of no force or action. A person is sane or not sane. He thinks straight or crookedly. Now consider aberration in a forceful way. A person looks, then an opposing force to him pushes aside his gaze or distracts it. But the really sane, forceful person looks right on through and past the opposition and sees what is there anyway. From HCOB, 19th of August 1967. HCOB means Hubbard Communication Office Bulletin. So in Scientology, Hubbard wrote many different references and policies and he would give them different categories. So this one would be a bulletin, normally written red ink on white paper. Now, as you can see, there's a second definition and then I think there's a couple of others, but these are more technical. So we're not going to look at that as the first definition is really the most important one. Now, what I find rather interesting about this definition is that uh, he says very clearly that a person who is aberrated doesn't see only black and doesn't see only white. He is also capable of seeing gray. So he's able to look at nuance, he's able to question it, he's able to use critical thinking. That's how I see that. And he obviously disapproves of that. You're not allowed to do that. You're only allowed to see for what it is and only that. But other than that, I think it is pretty clear what he means by that. So aberration is any way outside of that. Sometimes in this dictionary, there are also hand-drawn pictures for the different definition. And here for aberration, there is actually a picture. As you can see, there's a man taking off his glasses, looking at a horse and thinks, oh, this is an elephant. So this is an aberration. He doesn't see what is actually there. All right, let's have a look at acknowledgement. Something said or done to inform another that his statement or action has been noted, understood and received. Very good. Okay. 
and other such phrases are intended to inform another who has spoken or acted that his statement or action has been accepted. An acknowledgement also tends to confirm that the statement has been made or the action has been done, and so brings about a condition not only of communication, but of reality between two or more people. Applause at a theater is an acknowledgement of the actor or act plus approval. Acknowledgement itself does not necessarily imply an approval or disapproval or any other thing beyond the knowledge that an action or statement has been observed and is received. In signaling with the Morse code, the receiver of a message transmits an R to the sender as a signal that the message has been received, which is to say acknowledged. There is such a thing as over-acknowledgement and there is such a thing as under-acknowledgement. A correct and exact acknowledgement communicates to someone who has spoken that what he has said has been heard. An acknowledgement tends to terminate or end the cycle of a communication and when expertly used can sometimes stop a communicated statement or continued action. An acknowledgement is also part of the communication formula and is one of its steps. The Scientologist, sometimes in using Scientologies, abbreviates this to ACK, he, ACT, the person. L. L. R. H., so L. Ron Hubbard, definition notes. Right, so there's nothing much I can really add to that, only that uh, I would like to uh, talk quickly about over acknowledgements. Now, this is something that tends to happen a lot within Scientology particularly if you uh, want to stop somebody from talking. And they usually then raise the word and say, okay, I got it, thank you. And they do it very forcefully uh, in the intent to intimidate the person so the person doesn't keep on talking or whatever. So this would be an example of over-acknowledgement, of course. And you may have even seen this sometimes, at least in the past, these days not really anymore, but in the past when we had protest and we would protest uh, uh, Scientology sometimes the Scientologists would come and talk to the protesters and they would be quite forceful at times with their acknowledgement uh, trying to stop communication trying to stop the communication by being too forceful rather than uh, doing it correctly but frankly even if you do communicate and acknowledge correctly that doesn't mean suddenly the person will stop talking so I'm not really sure what kind of magic this is supposed to bring about. But apparently, if you acknowledge properly, the person will not continue talking on that particular subject. All right, so this is what Hubbard has written about acknowledgement. All right, let's take a look at ARC. A word from the initial letters of affinity, reality, communication, which together equates to understanding. It is pronounced by stating its letters, ARC. To Scientologists, it has come to mean good feeling, love or friendliness, such as he was in ARC with his friend. One does not, however, fall out of ARC. He has an ARC break. From L. Ron Hubbard definition notes. Now, here, very important, because we'll get back to that later on. He, he says that affinity, reality, communication together equates to understanding. Now, ARC is also known as the ARC triangle because it is an actual triangle and usually when you see in Scientology the ARC a triangle you have at the top you have the C then you've got on the um, right corner the A and then you've got the R so you've got C A R however there are pictures where the A is on top now as I understand it later on Hubbard changed that to put the C on top because he will say that uh, communication is the most important one of the three. So that is why I think he then moved the C on the top. So this is fairly simple, what ARC means, and I think that's fairly clear. All right, let's have a look at the ARC break. A sudden drop or cutting of one's affinity, reality, or communication with someone or something. Upsets with people or things come about because of lessening or sundering of affinity, reality, or communication or understanding it's called an ARC break instead of an upset because if one discovers which of the three points of understanding have been cut one can bring about a rapid recovery in the person's state of mind it is pronounced by its letters ARC break 
When an ARC break is permitted to continue over too long a period of time and remains in re-stimulation, a person goes into a, a sad effect, which is to say they become sad and mournful, usually without knowing what is causing it. This condition is handled by finding the earliest ARC break on the chain, finding whether it was a break in affinity, reality communication or understanding and indicating it to the person always, of course, in session. LRH definition notes. All right, so that was a mouthful. So let's have a first look at the first part. So he talks about a, a break of affinity, reality, communication, or understanding. Remember earlier when he talked about what ARC means, all three, so affinity, reality, and communication means understanding. So either there is a, a break with one individual one or all three of them. So this is what understanding. And then it's interesting because he talks about the fact that if you do not handle that, the person becomes sad and oftentimes doesn't even know why they, they have become sad. So what did he write exactly? So a person goes into a sad effect, which is to say they become sad and mournful, usually without knowing what is causing it. This I find rather amusing. So apparently you just become sad without even understanding why. All right, that's fair enough. This condition is handled by finding the earliest ARC break on the chain. All right, so let me define chain. What is meant by that? Okay, so in Scientology, you believe that you are the spirit, also known as the Thetan. You have a body and you have the mind. And the mind is split into two parts. You've got the reactive mind, which is where all the memories of pain and unconsciousness are stored and then you've got the analytical mind where all the other kinds of memories are stored and in Scientology when you go into session you look at the reactive mind now there's the, an idea of the chain and finding the earliest incident on the chain this means so let's say you have an irrational fears of apples okay so when you go into session you've got the auditor and he will help you find a memory where you had some upsetting happening with an apple and then you look at that you go over that until you feel okay with that memory and then the auditor will try to find out if there is an earlier memory about an apple and then you might find an earlier memory so the first memory maybe you were 22 and then the next one you were 18 and then the next one you, maybe you were 17 and the next one it goes a bit further you were five years old and you're trying to find the very first memory the very first incident where you had an upset with an apple and the idea is when you find the very first one and you audit that, it will break the whole chain and then you have no more an irrational fear of apples with this example, right? In any case, this is what is meant by that. So let me just read that again. So this condition is handled by finding the earliest ARC break on the chain, finding whether there was a break in affinity, reality communication or understanding and indicating it to the person, always of course, in session. To indicating it means basically when the auditor in a session says, ah, this is it. So he's indicating it to, to the person, right? And so in this case, if there's an ARC break, you need to find the earliest incident of a break in affinity, reality, communication, or or three of them, which is to say in understanding. So I hope that was clear. All right, darling. So this has been the letter A from the ABCs of Scientology. I do hope you found that interesting, entertaining, dare I say even educational. Do let me know if you have any further questions on that matter down in the comment section. If you yourself have any experience with these words, perhaps you are a Scientologist or ex-Scientologist yourself, please put them down in the comment section, of course, yourself, if you have any insights on that. And with that, I do wish you a most excellent and marvelous day. Goodbye. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's learn about Scientology. All the words and strange definitions to make normal terms seem far more malicious. Harvard laid a clever trap, but in the end it's a whole bunch of crap.